So in this case, I want to talk about sort of second order bandpass circuits. And I actually wanted to talk about this one from a standpoint of an op amp circuit, um, just to kind of give a very different perspective. You could have just done a bandpass with just an L, a C, and an R. But it's also interesting to see what happens when you put this with an op amp. And one of the things that you notice is that I have the L, C, and R, but I also have an R2 here. And I might imagine that there is a region where I've got R2 over R1 which that would probably, where R1 is the primary resistance. And so somewhere I'm going to get a gain is going to be R2 over R1. The question is going to be where. And the answer is going to be that's going to happen right at the middle of the band. Now in a bandpass filter circuit, it's often useful to see what happens in frequency response. And in this case, if I had the gain, it would be R2 over R1. This one is for a transfer function where that gain would be about 3, 3 or so, 3 or 4. And it gives you actually a little bit of resonance in this structure as well. You'll notice it's a very symmetric frequency response where I have, it looks like an, a differentiator on one side and an integrator on the other. And then it kind of has this intermediate place where it comes together. Um, and depending on what the sort of resonance or Q point would be, you know, this would be sort of our transfer function. I could do, I will get a little, it'll get a little bit peakier. So this is one that has a little bit of Q in it. Now you might imagine your input voltage response if the gain was one would be a step response here. I would see this sort of result that converges back to equilibrium. If, if the gain was three, this would be a little bit larger amplitude. It's really quite a straightforward and interesting circuit and an interesting approach as we put go through this. Um, what you also find is that the phase goes from 90 degrees to minus 90 degrees. We're going right through zero in the middle, which of course is right where you want your signal to be going to be passing through. So of course you've got a phase right at zero. It looks like it has exactly the signal you'd want. An interesting thing to notice in a bandpass, and it's probably more important than either of the other kinds of regions because the signal I care about is right in the middle, is that you know omega equals one over tau right at the corner, at its center point. Uh, so in this structure, that'd be where, you know, S would be J, J omega, and I build from there. Well, if I put J omega in, if I look at just this 1 in this S squared tau squared term, that solution is 0. So it's right at the band, there's something very interesting here, that it's basically, I have just the terms in the, in the middle. So in the band, in the, at the corner frequency, in this case, which would be LC in a classical filter, what I have is the one and the other terms basically cancel each other out. I'm not at zero, so the s's will subtract out, and I get a gain here of R2 over R1. Interesting. It's exactly what I'd expect for gain. Uh, wrote it a little bit different down here, but this is the way you would see things for a bandpass. And bandpass responses are great. The hard part about this experimentally is when I look at a step response, I need to be able to know what I'm looking at because I built this, in this case, close to where it happens. But you could imagine if I do a step response and my window of what I'm looking at in time is too small or too fast, it might look like it barely shows up. Or if I look at it at too long a window, which is a very typical thing to say, hey, let me put it a really long, you know, really slow and just see if something happens, I might see nothing. And so I kind of have to know where I'm looking when I look at a when I look at a bandpass. This would also be true for a high pass as well. But for typically high passes, you can find a little bit easier bandpass. You have to kind of know where is it interesting, because after all, there's a, only a region of frequency where it's important. On the other hand, this is used in so many places, from the standpoint of when you look at human hearing, uh, things are done as groups of bandpasses. When you look at a range of other classification techniques. You need to be looking at bandpasses. Um, we can go on and on where I want to be able to look at something for a filter for, say, an RF system where I want to be running at a particular care frequency. I need a bandpass to work with. So you start seeing this everywhere. And so it is really important to be kind of comfortable with these circuits because you will be using them again and again throughout your career.